Ever wondered why some sentences in different languages, especially the English language, follow a particular word order? Do you also know sentences, although grammatically correct, may be used as manipulating tools by the government and corporate bodies? Many have become victims of this circumstance without even realizing it. In today's episode, these and many more questions will be treated in this video. After the video, you will recognize how languages can be used to deceive the masses. Stay till the end of the video as we learn about these amazing facts you do not know about language and grammar. Syntax and Communication Language has been an important aspect of the human race. Without it, there'd be no way we'd be able to communicate among ourselves. However, language can either make or mar an individual, a group of people, or even the entire population as a whole. Imagine passing information with all the words complete, but in the wrong order. That can jeopardize the intended message's integrity. Hence, the need for syntax grammar to help us not only communicate, but also effectively and write. What then is syntax grammar? Syntax grammar refers to the set of laws and principles guiding how words are arranged to form meaningful sentences in a particular language. The arrangement of words and phrases and clauses are also governed by syntax. The formation of sentences and the structure of its components are interwoven and, in most languages, must follow a specific order. Sentence sequence. The basic explanation of syntax in most languages is the subject, S, verb, V, object, O, arrangement, in which most sentences occur. According to the wiki, about 85% of languages have their subject at the initial position in either SVO or SOV sequences. However, there are some exceptions whereby the subject is not placed first in the sentence. Such sentences are formed in orders such as VSO, VOS, OVS, or even OSV. All these sequences are governed by syntax. How does a sentence sequence affect the meaning? For example, in the English language, how the individual words that make up a sentence are related is based on the word order. For instance, given this sentence, the snake ate the rat, the subject, snake, acts on the object. Transposing the sentence will give it a different meaning to it. Application of syntax grammar in everyday life. Syntax grammar has to do with the deliberate use of words to communicate. And this time, we are not just talking about the choice of words, but rather, this is about how words are presented to the audience, especially written text. Many of us assume we can read and write, but we can only read what our minds are programmed to see in the real sense. What do I mean by this? In a fundamental understanding, only the writer can tell what he or she is trying to communicate. Let's check out some of the applications of syntax grammar which you might not be familiar with. Occurrence of Dog Latin Dog Latin is also referred to as a series of names like Mock Latin, Cod Latin, Macronic Latin, etc. According to Wikipedia, Dog Latin is the art of creating incomplete sentences or phrases to imitate original Latin by transposing words in other languages into Latin either by conjugating or reducing them as if they were in Latin. Dog Latin has no control with either Latin or English language. If written on the same document with Latin or English words, we need to ask ourselves, why do we have documents in court and some government letters written in Dog Latin? Due to a lack of understanding of these languages, many have played corporate bodies like banks, courts, and even the government. Although most of the rules and regulations were written with incorrect grammar, the Western region's governing systems have been deceiving the citizens in ways they could never imagine. The Chicago Manual of Style Actual communication and writing have different contexts, and there are specific rules that govern how to write words in an accepted format. These rules are spelled out in the Chicago Manual of Style. And for the use of Latin, there is only one accepted format. The CMOS General Manual guides everything about language use, from grammar to context, punctuation, and citation. So, the manual states that for words to be written in proper Latin, there must be hyphens between each word. So the statement comes out like in hyphen this hyphen hyphenated hyphen format. The American Sign Language The American Sign Language is learned as a second language and is closely related to the French Sign Language. It is thought that ASL uses a mixture of American and French language during the signing. Just as certain rules guide spoken words, so do we have laws in ASL. The subject-verb-object SBO order is applied in ASL, although different phenomena may affect the basic structure of words. Simple SVO are signed without pauses in between. Some rules allow the object to be placed first instead of the subject. 
the way a text appears in ASL is of utmost importance. Given a text in uppercase without hyphens, although it may be grammatically correct in oral language, it will be read differently as single words in sign language. Let's take a look at some bizarre usages of syntax grammar. Words that we read today are mere signs that have been attributed to meaning. It can happen that those words actually have no intention or even that they are put out with ulterior motives to create false impression. Corporate bodies have adopted the use of dog Latin to create a false impression. What do I mean by this? They dogged words with hidden motives so that when it is seen, it conveys a different meaning to the reader, which is not the original intent. Since time immemorial, this has been a common practice dating back to the 500s. The Roman King Justinian first practiced documents in dog Latin. He wrote a text in capital letters, which is incorrect in the Latin originals. No one could question him since the people have no understanding of the dogged texts. When you see a text written in capital letters, one assumes it is grammatically correct simply because it is readable. While in actual sense, the text may not even be in English in the first place. As you can see, it is not the fault of the document, but rather the ignorant understanding of the text. The text may be grammatically readable, but such all uppercase text represents a symbolic text. About this CMOS article, uppercase like this is a sign language, and without the hyphens in between, renders it untrue and does not mean what is being read. False acceptance of wrong charges. This is a common practice in the court of law. We do it without even understanding the grave situation we put ourselves in. False acceptance of false charges is sometimes why it seems that no matter what you do, there's no winning against the legal system. What happens when you plead not guilty to a charge? Although you say you are not guilty, in the real sense, it implies you accept the charge levied against you by accepting the charge otherwise means you are actually guilty. You have the intention of defending yourself before the judge. The way the legal system works is one that is built on deception and the ignorance of the masses. If you enter a court of law today, they would tell you two main statements. Ignorance is negligence, and the second is also like the first, saying incompetence is negligence. What do these two statements mean? To the court, they are less concerned whether you are aware of the law or not. You are accountable to the law even if you don't know about it. The other statement, also about incompetence, establishes that even if you can't eloquently defend yourself, it doesn't matter in this case. Therefore, you would get one competent with the law, a lawyer, to do your case. With all this self-righteousness of the law, you would think they don't violate the rules of proper grammar syntax themselves. But in fact, they do. And not that they only violate, they also violate with knowledge, which is even worse than that of the ignorant masses. How do they violate the law? I'll explain it. See, in the court, it has to be in the same language for a document to be valid. But the people of the court, especially financial governments, are always acting against this rule. They readily combine dog Latin with normal English, and they expect us to take it that way. So when you plead not guilty to such a false document that is not admissible in court, you are actually giving them the go-ahead that you are aware of the charges they have levied against you. This admission is what even provides the court with its power. But on the other hand, if you plead guilty to the false document the court has brought forward, you actually forgive yourself. Confusing, right? Allow me to expiate further. What you plead guilty to is the document's falsehood corrupted with dog Latin and not the false charges it bears. In court, crime of uttering. As one charge to court, using a corrupt language like dog Latin can lead you into false acceptance of what you haven't actually done. Conversely, the court also is committing an offense. This is called crime of uttering. What is this so-called crime of uttering? It is the case when a court uses a document that is illegal to get the defendant to admit to a crime that they might not have committed. And this is for sure a grave act with severe consequences. But as the general masses are unlearned about facts such as these, it is impossible to play to one's strength. Using dog Latin in an official court document renders it null and void. And again, using such material to make the defendant admit to a charge by taking the not guilty plea makes it an even worse act. We can call that an outright act of deception before the law, using a false document that is poisoned by the gloss of dog Latin. The court knowing that the defendant lacks exact knowledge of the charging document's validity, dogged grammatically in dog Latin, can even go ahead to pronounce a verdict on the false charges. You would therefore agree with me that the havoc the governments, private corporations, banking institutions, and the court itself have perpetually wreaked on innocent citizens is actually worse than we might know. Dog Latin in official documents. For a long time now, 
Dog Latin has been the commonest language adopted by bankers, courts, and government officials to write their documents. Texts are written in capital letters under the pretense of Dog Latin. Most people do not know that this is an act of fraud because documents in capital letters are written in two different languages. Normally, Dog Latin uppercase words that are unhyphenated obeys the English language's grammatical rules, but not the grammatical rules of Latin. Such text may make sense in English, but that is a deception tool to dupe the unlearned receiver. If you hold any contract or driver's license in which the text has been dogged, you are unknowingly part of a counterfeit criminal association. But a sound knowledge of syntax grammar can protect one against such situations. I bet you found today's episode insightful and enlightening. Click on the like button. You can also share your thoughts with us in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels for more interesting videos. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.